Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, astronomers attempting to understand why galaxies stop forming stars as they evolve to get one step closer. The James Webb Space Telescope reaches an important milestone on its way to its launch in October 2018. And astronomers observe a very strange behavior in a class of supernovae called Super Luminous Supernovae. Astronomers have known for some time now that galaxies begin their lives in these beautiful spiral structures, very colorful and full of star-forming activity. But something happens as these galaxies get older and as they merge with other galaxies that cause all star formation to stop for the rest of their evolution, even though there is still plenty of material, gas and dust and things like that, from which new stars can come. So, Astronomers are wondering, well, what's going on? They've, they've not been able to figure out why this star formation stops. Well, this week, astronomers using the Sloan Digital Sky Survey think they might have an answer. They've been looking at all kinds of galaxies, and they've noticed a phenomenon that's actually pretty common. As galaxies coalesce and, and merge together, the gas from one of the galaxies going into a supermassive black hole of another causes that gas to heat up and produce interstellar winds. And these winds are key because they are powerful enough to blow into the galaxy and heat it up enough that the stars cannot condense out of, the, out of that gas and dust. When gas gets to be a certain temperature and gets hot enough, stars can't form because they, won't, they, they, don't, they need to have some relatively cooler gas. This is also what happened in the early universe that prevented a lot of the first stars from forming. It wasn't until the universe cooled enough that stars could actually begin to form as gravity pulled it together for these stars to form. So what they think, so what astronomers think is going on here, and in a phenomenon that they're calling red geysers, because there's a bit of a period, periodicity to the phenomenon that they're looking at, probably due to the material falling into the supermassive black hole, is that, that as, as these interstellar winds are, are heating up the, the gases themselves, they prevent new stars from forming, much like what happened in the early universe. And it does that for the rest of the galaxy's life. Now, you may be asking a question, because I asked it too, well, can't the gas cool in some way as, as these galaxies merge? And the answer is not so long as the supermassive black hole is there feeding on material. As long as it's there pulling material in, it's going to create these interstellar winds that will be strong enough to heat up the gas, preventing it from, from forming any new stars for the rest of that galaxy's life. Now, another question you might be asking is, well, what if the you know what if the black hole runs out of things to eat? Won't that cool the gas uh, also? And well, of course, the obvious answer there is if the black hole runs out of stuff to eat, then there's no new gas to create stars out of. And again, we're left with a situation where no new stars are forming. So I think astronomers are onto something here. They think they've finally answered the question of what causes, what mechanism is in place that stops new stars from forming at various parts in a galaxy's evolution. Now this research just came out this week and is going to be published in the journal Nature. And the way these guys are describing it is as follows. They're, kind of, they're, they're calling it a kind of a uh, desert in which even though there's plenty of, of gas and dust to form things out of, it's blowing and it's heated up and it's basically just preventing all new stars from forming. Next, an important milestone has been reached from the James Webb Space Telescope. And this is the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, which is going to be launched in October 2018. Well, this week, in the Goddard Clean Room, which is, by the way, one of the largest in the world, installed and attached the Integrated Science Instrument Module, or ISOM. And this is a huge deal because this is the main science instruments of the James Webb Space Telescope. It includes four different instruments. It includes the near-infrared camera, the near-infrared spectroscope, the mid-infrared camera, and the phi and guidance sensors. These are all very important instruments that, that JWST is going to be using for studying not only the early universe, the first stars, the first galaxies, but also exoplanets and their atmospheres. And so this marks a big moment in the project because think about it. The four main instruments have been installed and tested. They were tested earlier last year in the cryogenic tanks that they have at Goddard. And then they've been installed. 
the main mirror segments have also been installed and they're ready to go. And so now we are ready to move on to the next phase of the JWST mission. So this was a big deal and kudos to all the engineers and scientists at Goddard for getting this done. So far, the James Webb Space Telescope project remains on track for its launch in October 2018. And of course, when everything, anything big happens in the, in the program or the project, I'll be sure to let you know. And finally, a team of astronomers have observed some very strange behavior coming from a superluminous supernovae known as PS1-14BJ. Now, if you don't know what a superluminous supernovae is, they're also called hypernovae, and they occur in very massive stars that are very, what astronomers call, metal poor. These are stars mostly made up of hydrogen and helium and little else. And these were the kinds of stars that made up the early universe. They're very large, very hot, usually about 130 to 200 times the mass of our sun. And when they explode, they explode in a very bright supernova, obviously super bright, so they call it superluminous supernovae. <laughs> but this week, astronomers using the Pan-STARRS telescope on Mount Haleakala in Hawaii have made these observations, and they found some rather bizarre behavior in this. Now, what they noticed was that PS1-14BJ was expanding very, very slowly, much slower than most superluminous supernovae tend to do. For example, most supernovae have a maximum rise time, a time when they get to their maximum brightness of about 120 days. But here, this one was happening much slower, over 250 days to reach its maximum brightness. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. So in the case of PS1-14BJ, what astronomers think might have caused this slow brightening of the Mac to the maximum brightness, slower than before, was that there might have been a surrounding shell of gas that, ha that had already come off of the star before the explosion occurred. This would have impeded the, the brightness of the, uh, of the supernovae itself. Another explanation is that the supernova could have been powered by something called a magnetar, and these are these very rapidly spinning neutron stars with a very strong magnetic field. So now the PS1-14PJ has faded away, what they're going to do now is look closely at the galaxy itself that it came from to see what they can learn about the environment. If you'd like to learn more about what a superluminous supernovae is or a hypernova, then check out the video I made a while back called The Hypernova of VY Canis Majoris. All you gotta do is click on the little eye that's in the upper left. <laughs> Not sure which way it's gonna be. Uh, and click on that and, and you can learn more about what parent stability supernovae are as well as these superluminous supernovae. So check it out. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thank you all for watching, and I want to thank all my Patreon supporters for your support on making SFN better. I also would like to encourage you to follow us on at Space Fan News and at Deep Astronomy on Twitter, as well as liking our Facebook page at Space Fan News. So, we hope to see you next week. Thank you all again for watching, and as always, keep looking up. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why they don't just call it Supercalifragiluminous Expialinova and be done with it. <laughs> <sighs> mm, I loves me some squash. <laughs>